I'm gonna be painting again today. See, I've even got my paint brushes, eh? Very prepared. And of course, can't forget a canvas. I've already pre-primed this with a little bit of raw umber and white. So it's a beautiful, I like to call chocolate ice cream color. Today I'm gonna be making a painting to kind of go along with these two, which I've already created. It's becoming a bit of a, a set, I guess, <laughs> a collection. But I, I, I do wonder if I should change the color of the watermelon's background. I'm not sure the turquoise quite pops the way I want it to. What the heck, <laughs> I'm gonna change the color right now. I'm just mixing a little bit of quinacridone magenta and titanium white and just see what that looks like. If I don't like it, obviously I can paint over it again. It's kind of the magic of flat colors in paint. It's different. I mean, it's looking different. I don't know if it's looking better. I'm just gonna add some red polka dots because the lemon one has white polka dots. This I don't like, but you know what? I'm just gonna let it dry. <laughs> But anyway, these are the two pieces that I've already made that I want to create like a little counterpart piece to go along with. You can kind of see how they have similarities. They each have the fruit, the flower, the leaf, and a cut open version of the fruit all incorporated together into one illustration with some, I mean, the composition's not too bad. I don't, if I don't say so myself. So that is the plan for this next one, but I thought we could do strawberries because they sound delicious, don't they? Let me just arrange these. <laughs> you know, so that they look pretty. Oh, we'll do it the other way. All right, here we go. There's my workspace. Very exciting. If you didn't see my last video where I did an acrylic painting, I'm doing basically the same thing, but I went in a little bit more depth in that video about like all the tools I'm using and such. So I'd recommend that video if you're looking for that information. But uh, we're just gonna jump right into the painting now. I'm using burnt umber with a little bit of water if it's too stiff and a kind of a, I think this is an angle brush, chisel brush, flat brush. They all work kind of similarly to be honest, but I'm going around and just kind of sketching in the composition and where I want each and every strawberry and leaf and everything. When it comes to drawing on paper, sketching has always been my absolute favorite part. <laughs> and honestly, when it comes to painting, it's the exact same thing. I just like going from nothing to something, but there isn't that like need to be perfect because you're still figuring out that something. So if you make a mistake, it's not a big deal. You just kind of keep going and it's way more fun. And I just really enjoy the process of sketching. So I really took my time with this and enjoyed every little line. And there is a little extra special something, I think when using a paintbrush, just because it feels so different and it's like softer and you have to like be very light with your wrist. And sometimes my pinky sticks out, you know, it just makes me feel feels so much like me and it makes me happy. So I like sketching, clearly. <laughs> Can't forget the flowers as well. I am using references for this because you couldn't possibly ask me what the flower on a strawberry plant looks like and have me give you an accurate representation <laughs> or the leaf for that matter. Apparently strawberries are very like pokey looking leaves, which is very cool. I don't think I've ever seen a real strawberry plant in the flesh. So looking up the references and stuff was kind of fun and informative. I'm also taking special care to kind of just lay out everything so that it kind of fits the same style as the previous two pieces. So it's, there's some that are like on leaves and then there's some that are kind of like floating all on their little lonesome to create like just a fun composition. Now I used a separate reference for like the actual shape of everything, but this was a really good reference. I grabbed this because it had such a good shot of both the flowers and the strawberries. And I thought I could replicate those colors, hopefully from this image. I mixed a little bit of cadmium red as well as, what is this blue color called? Of course I didn't put it on camera so I can't read it, but I think, let me look. <laughs> Ultramarine blue. It's called ultramarine blue, everybody. But I mixed those two colors to kind of create a, what would you call it? A purple? <laughs> I also mixed it with a little bit of the pink that was there and added some raw umber to desaturate it a smidgen because I am going with like the base color. And I mentioned this in the other video, but my preferred method of painting is to kind of find a mid-tone on the deeper end so that I can add highlights, but also add shading. It just works so so far the best for me of all the things I've tried. So this is the mid-tone on the deeper end strawberry color that I created. 
and I just went in and filled in the strawberries. I did try <laughs> just a little something else though. In the moment, I mixed a lighter like pink color to like just block out where the highlights would be. And then I moved back to the deeper tone and filled in anything that I didn't fill in with the pink. This is just to get like the general shape of the fruit. We're not looking for perfection, obviously. So clearly I had some fun with it. <laughs> Whenever I'm not reaching for perfection, I'm my happiest. So I don't know why sometimes I still try and upset myself, but there we go. We're making breakthroughs together. You know, sometimes you just gotta talk things through and you realize things about your deep inner self that you didn't know before. Here I'm grabbing a really light pink color. It's gonna look white and I used this for some highlights because strawberries are quite shiny, especially when they are a little wet. So I wanted mine to look delicious and juicy and just plump for the picking. That was a weird sentence, but it's what I wanted. And I kind of added a little bit of a rim light on that strawberry and this one as well. Trying to decide on a light source that I hopefully wouldn't uh, change my mind about in the future. Right now this strawberry in the top right is looking mm, yummy. <laughs> This has been the case with the previous two paintings that I showed you, but the cut open fruit, I will admit it's not logical to have a cut open fruit hanging on a vine or of any kind, but it's just kind of the theme that I'm going for and have done with the previous two. So I had to do it with this one as well. And it's always the most tricky part because, I, I, mean, I mean, I don't know why, so I can't say because but it feels like it just has a whole lot more going on than the outside of a fruit, especially when it came to the lemon. I struggled. I think I spent more time on that cut open lemon than the rest of the painting. Same thing happened with this strawberry. It's going to be, I'm going to keep continuing coming back to it. You'll notice that as we progress on through this journey. But anytime I got too overwhelmed, I would just cover over the whole thing and make it a nice flat color that I could start over again. But I always focus on making the very center, well, not the most center, but the center part lighter. And then the most center is like the same color as the outside because that's kind of what a strawberry looks like, apparently. <laughs> I mixed another pink color this time with a smidge of yellow in there. So it's a bit warmer and I started like sketching out the like, I don't know if you'd call that the grind. <laughs> so. Wait, the, the rind? I don't know if you'd call that the rind of the strawberry, but it's kind of like a heart shape. So I sketched that in with this and also drew like these little lines going out towards the seeds because some of the references looked like that. And here's my most simplest form of a cut open strawberry. Then I grabbed a dark color and it's colored in the very center bit. You know, the part of the strawberry that's like hollow and you hope you don't get a strawberry with a really big hollow section because then it doesn't always taste that great. But if it has the like tiny little hollow section, it's usually pretty good. I colored that in just a little darker with a little bit of burnt umber mixed with my red color that I'd already mixed. So I guess my strawberry color. I used a smaller brush for this to try and get some precision. And I also used this same color to shade this back strawberry down there in the bottom. Give it a little separation, let it stand alone, be its own unique strawberry. And I also added a smidge of shading to the top right strawberry that honestly is kind of like my favorite strawberry. <laughs> if I had to pick favorites, now at this point, I decided that my strawberries were too purple. There's just too much blue. They needed to be warmed up. So I mixed a brand new red color this time using my cadmium red light and I think cadmium yellow hue to create a bit more orangey color and mix that with my previous strawberry color. Tried to figure out where to put it and chose to put it on the inside of the strawberry first. I decided this color was much better, so I started filling it in around some of the other strawberries as well. Here's a video of me doing that. Mmm, exciting. <laughs> I ended up painting over that highlight and then like smoothing it out and blending it, which I think honestly looks pretty tasty. Mm. You can really see the difference now between like the redder strawberry and the purpler strawberry. And I hope you will agree with my decision to color over all of them <laughs> and make them much brighter. But I was really missing the highlights. So I mixed a new highlight color this time with a little bit of yellow again to be warmer. And I went around and added, re well, re-added in <laughs> the highlights that I liked. Again, it's still more of like blocking in the highlights rather than making perfectly placed highlights because I'm just trying to find the three-dimensional shape of 
the strawberry. Again, moved back to that cut open strawberry because <laughs> I just didn't know what I was doing. This is a bit of a exaggerated version that I don't quite like, but there it is. Went a little overboard, but I did want like the center of it to be brighter. So I figured why not just like fill in the whole thing and then add darker color on top, which is exactly what I did. And I grabbed a dry brush and tried to like blend it to create a softer gradient from the dark strawberry color to the light inner core strawberry color. Then moved back to the darker one and like re-added in the like inner bits. I don't think it really looks like a strawberry. The earlier versions were better, but obviously more purple. But again, it does not stay this way. So it's all fine. It's all good and dandy. It's great. Added in a bunch of white highlights. <laughs> again, going overboard. It kind of reminds me of fire or a heart or something, but not a strawberry. So we will return to this. I grabbed that, what did I call it before? <laughs> but like the base strawberry color and added little dots over the highlighted areas to kind of create those indentations of the strawberry that contain the little tiny seed in the center. Again, keeping it as abstract as possible, but still trying to find some form of detail because that's just my style. <laughs> I will admit it kind of just looks like it has the chicken pox but I was still experimenting and still learning. I wanted to see what it would look like, even though I was pretty sure I wasn't done yet, but I wanted to see what it would look like with the little seeds in the center. So I just grabbed burnt umber and just kind of like added little dots inside of the bigger dots. And that's what that looked like. Decided to take a break from the strawberries because I just, I just needed a different color on my brush. So I mixed a color with turquoise blue and yellow to create this leaf color and I, just blocked in all of the leaves, starting with the top left, trying to incorporate that strawberry leaf shape. I did add a little blue to the color to create some more dif differentiation. Contrast, <laughs> especially like where the strawberry little tufts overlapped some of the leaves. So I just made sure they were a slightly different hue or tone just to make them stand out. And since I already had the color mixed, I used that like deeper bluer leaf color to color in the leaf in the bottom right because it is pushed back and further from our point of view. I snagged some titanium white and just added in that base color for all of the flowers to really make them pop. I think I say this anytime I ever use solid white, but it just makes me happy. You can't get this joy painting white on a white canvas, let me tell you. You have to have a canvas that has some other color on it. But then once you add a little bit of white and the way it pops and that, mm, that perfect just, mm, it looks... Honestly, I want to say delicious, even though you don't really eat flowers, but I love it. Just look how it pops. It really draws your attention and it's not even done yet. I did mix in like the slightest smidge of burnt umber to create a little shading to the flowers just to start that journey towards making it look more like a specific strawberry flower. Then I grabbed a smaller paintbrush and went back to the brighter white color and started really finding the edge of each of the petals because I noticed that strawberry flowers, their petals kind of overlap each other in a, a fan-like texture. So that's what I tried to emulate. And I also tried to get the little, little blub at the end of the petal. And I just did that for every single one. Painting is so relaxing, y'all. It's just you sitting there smudging goo on a piece of cotton. It's, there's nothing like it really. I guess I thought the green color is a little too dreary. So I mixed up a more like lime sap green color and went over some of the vines and such to just, I think the point was to make them look rounder. So I thought if like the center of the vines a brighter color and the outside edges are darker, it's going to look more three dimensional, which isn't wrong, but obviously <laughs> it's a little exaggerated at the moment. So I pretty sure I'm it I, I, I tone that down I do have to say though this color was perfect for like the little tufts that poke out of the top of a strawberry doesn't that look great next to that red like mm, how did I manage that one maybe I was looking at a reference probably this is definitely something I struggle with well with painting and with drawing to be honest but like leaf texture is just so foreign to me I'm going to continue to try but I tried to find some shape to the leaf and uh make some of those veins show through a little better. So this is me attempting that. I spent a lot of time just focusing on all of the green areas of the painting. I kind of bounced around a lot, just trying to find something that worked with the other colors on the piece, but also made each piece of leaf look unique and not like 
just a blob of the other leaves around it. <laughs> also added a little yellow dot to the center of the flowers with like little green like star shape underneath of it because that's what the flower looks like in real life. <laughs> and it's simple enough. Why forget it? Back to the strawberries. I mixed a parent umber color with the strawberry color to create those little shadows and started just poking around at the strawberry, trying to be kind of uniform with it because on some of the previous ones I wasn't. So like the dots changed in size and location a little bit too much. So I just, you know, tried to make it look a little bit more like a pattern and what I feel like a strawberry would look like. Then I added a little bit more highlight, but taking the little holes of the strawberry into consideration. So like the highlights would be around the outside edge of it where it's gonna catch light. Huh? Highlights are so fun. I don't know anyone who hates heading highlights. I'll just point that out. Only people who have never tried it and they don't even hate it because they don't know that it would be not fun. So there's just no opinion and there's people that love it. Refilled my cadmium red hue. <laughs> Refill. <laughs> just put some more on the canvas, okay? And I just used that straight from the tube to just bring a little bit more saturation to the strawberry. You can kind of see how the hue is shifting in that area. Then I just took that same general principle and applied it to all of the strawberries. Highlights, shading, dots, Dots, blobs, seeds, and so forth, and so on, so on, and so forth. <laughs> okay, I wasn't paying attention to the cut open strawberry, but it looks different now. I must have missed something. But I did grab a little burnt umber mixed with some red and like just deepen in that center core section. And I think that made a pretty big difference. I also added like little seeds on the outside edge of the strawberry that might be visible. I exaggerated some more sh highlights. <laughs> I was gonna say shadows. I exaggerated a lot more highlights. So I'm just trying to make these things look so shiny. I, <laughs> looking at it now, I'm like, what was I thinking? But you know, at the time it was fun. Can't blame myself for much here. I understand. I added in some tiny little red dots around the flower because they have those little, uh, I have no idea what they're called, but they like poke out of the center of the flower and have a little tuft on the end. Now this, this decision. You can see me mixing red and yellow there to create like an orange and then I add more yellow to make it even more yellow. It's hard to walk you through my idea. I'm sorry, I'm moving in my chair. It's probably annoying. But I had this idea that yellow would be a good background color because like the lemon one is yellow and it has a blue background color. The watermelon one had a turquoise background color but I wasn't crazy about it so then I added the pink at the beginning of the video if you remember which honestly I feel like I could change that as well. So I, I guess I was just feeling very bold. <laughs> so I started adding in this yellow and as soon as I did I'm thinking a certain fast food chain da 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 you know and I wasn't loving it. It's just, I don't want strawberries to make me think of grease. And I thought while I was doing it, you know, maybe I'm being too critical. You know, maybe other people won't think this. So I'm just gonna color in the whole thing because I don't have a plan B here. I don't know what other color I would even use. So uh, yeah, I colored in the whole thing, but I decided it was a little too patchy and it needed a second coat. And this probably would have been a good moment to reevaluate and decide if I did want to try a different color. I decided that was not the direction I was gonna go with it. So I just began another coat, but this time you can kind of see I was a little lazy. I thought maybe if I just do yellow straight from the tube, it won't have that same recognizable factor. That was about it for the amount of thought I put into it. <laughs> the problem with this being that my yellow color that I own is slightly transparent, which you can probably see. So you can see that like orange color showing through it, which meant <laughs> I was gonna have to do yet another layer, which I chose to do. <laughs> it, it, it. Okay, I'm trying to like form some thoughts here, but looking back, I remember just being like, this is not the right color. And then I did another layer and I'm like, this is still not the right color. And then I realized it was going to need a third coat and I'm like, this is still not the right color, but I did it anyway. I'm just smiling, looking back. You know, you ever look back at yourself when you were like eight and you're just like, I was so dumb. Well, I'm having that same feeling, but it was last week. <laughs> and to be fair, it doesn't look that bad. 
The problem is, now that I have it hanging up next to the other ones, the white flowers blend in with the yellow background when it's like across the room so you don't really see the flowers, which I do not like, which just means I do need to probably go back to either that orange color that I had before or something completely different. So I would greatly appreciate any recommendations that you have. Something that will look good next to green, red, and white. <laughs> That's not too tall in order, is it? And since I added those like red dots to the strawberry background and the lemon background, has light blue dots. I mixed a little bit of, actually I didn't even mix. I just grabbed some titanium white and added little dots all over the background. I think I tried to make them pretty uniform. And then I had three paintings all part of like a set. Honestly, the yellow doesn't bother me as much as the pink on the the watermelon one. That one definitely needs to change. <laughs> but seriously, let me know what you think, what colors I should use for the background. Both the lemon one and the strawberry one. I am accepting applications. And here's a little close up since you stayed till the end of the video. Mmm, look at that. Here's to continuing and improving on our acrylic painting journey. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week. Hope you all have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye.